Hey everyone, uh, real quick short video. Um, I need to talk about extraneous solutions uh, because we will be doing the solving uh, portion of this chapter. So I just wanna talk about extraneous solutions. You've heard this word before, but I wanna reiterate what that means. It means after you solve a problem, so for instance, solving something like this, and you get your answer, does the problem, does the answer work in the original problem? So this is where we're going to have to consider domain issues. And remember, domain represents the x values. So when I ask about what domain issues this problem right here is going to have, uh, there are some domain issues because one thing you have to remember is that in a fraction that your denominator cannot be zero. So what you want to do is just figure out real quick what x values would make your denominator zero. So the easiest way to do that is to take your denominator, like x plus 1, or 4x plus 5, and set it to not equal zero. So what we'll be doing in something like this is figuring out what x value would make the denominator zero, and then I'm putting the slash through the equal sign because I don't want it to equal zero. So in the first problem, I can just subtract one. So when I'm done, I just want to make sure that negative one is not an answer because if I put it back in the original equation over here, you're going to get an error message on your calculator because you can't take uh, a number and divide it by zero. So I don't want to have negative one as the solution. And in this problem, you know, I'm going to subtract five and then I'm going to divide by four. And I just want to make sure that my solution is also not negative 5 fourths. So they went ahead and did the problem. You know, you can look at a few more examples here. Um, there will be more in the video coming up. So they just want to know, you know, that, you know, they did some solving here. They did cross products they solved, and they got their answer of negative 2. And the idea is you just want to make sure that negative 2 is not one of those answers that wouldn't work. So... Uh, I just got to make sure again that my answer isn't negative 1 and my answer isn't negative 5 fourths. It's not. So negative 2 is what we would just call a solution. Um, then they did these two problems here, A and B. So when they did problem A, you know, right here, they, again, those denominators can never be zero. So when they're done solving, they got a negative 8. I just got to make sure that negative 8 is not an extraneous solution. So in problem A, you know, I just got to make sure that those denominators are not zero. So x in the first fraction, that can't be zero. Uh, the second fraction, 4, nothing's going to make that denominator zero. And then in the third fraction, same, same situation. You know, that denominator of x can't be zero. So I just got to make sure when I'm done solving that my answer is not zero because zero would be considered an extraneous solution. So you can see through the math how they solved and they got negative 8. So negative 8 is not negative 1. So negative 8 is going to be a solution. Um, when they go to problem B, and they talk about this one, again, I just got to make sure that whatever I get for my answers of X, so if you look at problem B, I just got to make sure, again, sorry, I had to pause, that X minus 5, that denominator isn't 0, and that this denominator isn't 0. So I just want to make sure that whatever I get for X, subtract 5, that I don't get 0, and that whatever I get for X, it doesn't give me 0. So in this problem, after I solve, I just want to make sure that my answer is not 5, and that my answer is not 0. So they went ahead and did all the solving, and they got 1, and they got 15. So those are both going to work, because they're not 0 or 5. So real quick, what is an example of a problem that would have an extraneous solution? So what they did in this problem is they went and had it solved. Okay, they get their answers down here. And I just got to make sure that those answers would not be considered extraneous solutions. So I got to make sure that, you know, looking at my denominators, what would make those denominators zero? So in the first fraction, you know, I don't want this denominator to be zero. In the last fraction, I don't want this denominator to be zero. And in the second fraction, I don't want this denominator to be zero. So in the first one, you know, this x minus 3, if I just add 3, I don't want an answer of 3. And in this one, I would subtract 3. I don't want an answer of negative 3. 
And in this one, you know, this is just a difference of squares. And they actually end up being just, you know, x plus 3 and x minus 3, what we already checked. So when I'm done, I just want to make sure that my answers are not 3 and negative 3, because if it's either of those, that's considered an extraneous solution. So if you look at their answers, they got 3 halves, or 1.5, and they got negative 3. Well, that can't happen, because if you put negative 3 back in the problem, so specifically, let me go back to the original problem, if you get an answer, if negative 3 and you tried to put it into this fraction, that denominator would be 0 and it can't be 0. So just a quick video to watch for that. There is not a practice or follow-up for this. Just watch this video first and then you'll go into the solving section.